Hi, my name is Victor and today I'm going to show you some of the new things in Revit 2020.2 which is the latest update for Revit that we have currently today it's 25th of, 25th of November uh, 2019 so this is the latest update so far so I have opened here the sample project uh, that comes with Revit and this is in Revit 2020.2 and this here is in Revit 2019.2 can you spot the difference? okay if you can't here it is you can see this coordinate system here and actually if we go to level 1 we also see it here we see it here we see it on the side plan no, we don't because I have hidden it. But there's no such thing in 2019. So what's that? Apparently, uh, Autodesk decided to deal with uh, the coordinates. So if you have uh, dealt with coordinates before, like uh, we have inside this project base point and survey point traditionally, but now we also have this internal origin that we can enable and this is what we see as these two arrows so if you go to Revit 2019 and we go to visibility graphics site we don't have that one we only have the project base point and the survey point that's as you can see here are on two different spots so what is this uh, internal location? What does it do? Uh, well, I'm going to switch on here the other two points that we have project base point and survey point. And now we have three points in three different spaces. So if you have dealt with coordinates before, you might know that uh, apart from the survey point and the project base point we also have an internal uh, project <laughs> zero uh, internal project coordinate system and the zero of that coordinate system was never visible before so what we had to do here in other versions of Revit up until now was um, the only way to find out where that zero is uh, was actually using adding or placing lines with dynamo at the zero of the current system and that was it now this point is visible and also there is another uh, difference actually if you select the project base point it no longer has that pin see here to move the survey point we have that uh, pin that we can pin it and pin it or it's actually a clip never mind so we can clip it or unclip it and move it there are plenty of tutorials uh, on the internet what does it do exactly you can uh, google them and see but now for the project base point we don't have that how come well in the older versions of Revit we actually do have this clip so we can unclip it move the project base point and clip it back which doesn't move the project or we can just move it and then move the project with it and apparently now this thing works differently we can still move the project base point but it's not moving the project so in order to move the project we actually have to relocate it so to relocate it we have to go to manage project location relocate project and then pick a point and move it somewhere so this is the first thing that is new in Revit 2020. And another thing 
that I want to show you is actually in a 3D view. As you know, like a couple of versions back, um, we got uh, this option to change between perspective and orthographic views. Actually, we do have it in 2019 as well. You can check between perspective and orthographic. Actually, it was uh, 2019, the first version of 2019, where we got this option. So now I'm going to check into perspective. It turns into something like this. And you probably noticed, or maybe you didn't. We can change that in 2019 as well. But what's the difference here? The difference is right here. You see, we have the navigation wheel, we have the zoom. But what do we have now in uh, Revit 2020.2 is this uh, paper plane here, which says fly. And of course, as O2 in Revit, when you uh, hold uh, the mouse pointer on top of it, it gives you some explanation. So if we click on that, we can now use either the arrows of your keyboard or the WASD buttons to fly in a project and we can look around with the mouse. So we can now fly as in other software. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have uh, control of the speed without flying, but still it's nice to have it, like, uh, fly around, fly through objects. I'm just pressing the W, A, S, D. So yeah, we can also press E to go up, Q to go down, similar to other programs that deal with moving in 3D in such a way. But, as I already mentioned, we don't seem to have a speed control on this. Anyway, so that's the second thing that I wanted to show you. Another thing is that Revit 2020.2 comes with Dynamo 2.3, the newest version of Dynamo. Uh, what's new in that version? Of course, when you upgrade to Dynamo 2.3, you have to install all your packages again, so I don't have any packages here. But we do have a couple of new options. And one of them is actually a selection. So if you go to selection here, have all elements at level, all elements of category, and now we have all elements of Ktribri in view, which is pretty neat. We don't have that in the old versions of Dynamo, at least not in the out-of-the-box nodes. So what does it do? We just get a Ktribri. Let's select the furniture, for example. And let's select a view. So in 3D, we should be able to see 30 elements for furniture, or all of the elements in the project. But in, let's say, level 1, where's level 1? We should see less. Or are they all in? Are they on level 1? Okay, let's go to level 2. Okay, so all our furniture is on level 2. Let's go and check walls then. So we have 24 walls on level 2. And we have 25 walls on level 1. And if we select the 3D view, we have 55 walls. So that's pretty easy to do now. A new option for the selection, and we also have a new node which is uh, different for surfaces. 
So if we just type in difference here in this search of Dynamo, if you have worked with Dynamo before, you know that um, we can get the difference of two solids with solid dot difference. But now we have another new node for surfaces. So we can get the surfaces, uh, so we can get the difference of two surfaces or multiple surfaces. So how does that surface dot difference works? Well, here we have here we have a single surface, this tiny little rectangle here, and here we have a list of surfaces. So what happens if we connect this to the node? We can't see anything yet, but if we hide to the geometry preview with those two, you can see that now this surface dot difference takes out the list of surfaces from the initial surface by patch and returns the poly surface. Which then we can convert to a list of surfaces with polysurface.surfaces. So that's it. So another thing that is uh, improved in Red 2020 is the PAT2. So as you know, in Red 2020, the PAT2 was introduced and it's brand new. So if we go to the Analyze uh, button on the ribbon menu and select Path of Travel, we select a point here alongside the kitchen table and we want to check uh, what's the path to this door over there. Revit provides us with, with this path and it knows that we should not bump into walls or furniture Actually, we can control that um, here. We can select more elements to be ignored. Like here, we can select to ignore the furniture. And then we can draw a new path, which still is kind of similar, but it goes on the other side of that uh, column here. Anyway, so what's new? You can actually see that this sofa here, the path goes straight through it. Why is that? Because this thing here, if we go to spot elevation, is at elevation zero. But this floor here is on minus 550, whatever units that product is in. And yeah, this sofa is on a lower level, so the path can't detect it. And we can actually go here and tell it, okay, I want the bottom to be on minus 550. But what is Revit going to tell us? No, we can't. We need a non-negative value. So we can do that. Okay then. Let's put some 10 because we like we like 10. What can we do now that's new in Revit 2020 or 2? Well, we can select the path. And when the path is selected, we have the update button, but we also have add waypoints. So we can add waypoints. That means we can put a point here, and then Revit is going to tell us uh, unable to find a route between the points. Check route analysis settings. Maybe I didn't have to mess up with that one. Okay, let's try adding the point again. 
Okay, now it works. We should be we should be understanding this is new too. So now we have that point here and we can move it. And we can move it in such ways that we go around this furniture. Actually we can we pretty much draw the part ourselves though, with those points. I mean it's still a good thing to do. Uh, it's it is still going to try to circumvent other uh, obstacles, but yeah, we can pretty much draw it ourselves. We can even snap. You can see we can snap to the grids or to the walls. So theoretically, we can draw it first with other elements and then just place the points. Uh, the part still doesn't uh, know what's the minimum distance to go around a piece of furniture, so we might uh, want to do that as well, but it looks nice. So that's it. Uh, those are what I believe uh, the most interesting uh, changes uh, from my perspective uh, in Revit 2020.2. Uh, there are actually some uh, new notes in Dynamo for dealing with uh, steel connections, but I'm an architect and I don't know a lot about steel connections, but I don't know where you can find more information about this, and you can find the link below. Really like uh, that uh, page here. Uh, actually, I'm not familiar with the website, but I do like... Uh, uh, how they listed uh, all the new things in uh, Web 2020.2 so I'm going to drop you a link to that page and you can check it out for yourself there are some minor changes for the schedules I can show you that but it's a really not a beer not a big thing we can pretty much freeze the header we can't see it here because what it does do is pretty much uh, the same as uh, some WordPress website. So if I go to my website, you can see that this menu on the top is frozen. And you can also see that you can get that free ebook for tips and tricks in Revit. I'm going to close that because I already have the book. But if I didn't have the book, I'll just drop here my email and name or name and email and I'll get that book because it's really good and it's for free so why not so what does that freeze uh, button do here when the header is frozen it does pretty much that the menu stays there when I scroll down so here if I had a longer schedule like that one and the header is frozen it just stays up there if it's not frozen it goes down and we can also highlight the active cells but minor change I don't find it so important but if you do go ahead make use of it and check that link uh, you can also check my website it's revitexperiments.com uh, thank you, uh, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe, because every once in a while I'm going to drop out something new on the topic of Revit and, or Dynamo. Thank you for watching, and till the next time. Bye-bye.